Just like we have subgroups for groups, we have subrings for rings. And it's exactly what you'd expect. You've got a subset of a ring that is itself a ring. If that happens, you've got a subring. And also, just like we had for subgroups, we've got different tests for figuring out whether a th something is a subring. Now, this first one is very much like the one step test for a subgroup. So, what it says is that it's a subring if the subset is closed under subtraction and multiplication. Now, Notice that we don't have to worry about inverses for the multiplication operation because, well, we don't necessarily have inverses even in the original ring. So, doing this is good enough. The book tends to prefer that's that way of doing it, and certainly I agree, in some cases that's the way to go. However, I do tend to, when I'm thinking about things, tend to go with thinking about is three separate things to check. Check whether it's closed under addition, multiplication, and additive inverses. So if we can add two things in the subset, it's in the subset. If we multiply two things in the subset, it's in the subset. And everything in the subset has an additive inverse, then it's a subring. Let's take a look at a couple of examples, and let's do one each way. So let's say that first of all, my ring R is the set of two by two real valued matrices. This was actually in video 12.1 where we talked about that this was in fact a ring. So I'm going to look at the subset which is the set of two by two integer valued matrices. I'm going to do this using this sort of two set way. Because, let's just think about it, if I subtract two matrices that are integer valued, I'm going to get an integer valued matrix. If I multiply two matrices that are integer valued, I get an integer valued matrix. So there we go. S is a subring. Okay, another example I want to look at, let's say R is Z6, again, using operations modulo 6, and I'm going to say S is equal to the set 0, 2, and 4. Okay, so I want to check that Using the second way of doing things, I want to check that that set is closed under addition, multiplication, and additive inverses. Again, every one of those is pretty easy to check. When I add these things up, I know I'm adding even numbers, and adding two even numbers is going to give me an even number, even when we take things modulo 6. Similarly, multiplying two even numbers is always going to give me an even number, even when I do things modulo 6. We do have to be a little bit careful on both of those, because if I had an odd modulus, that would not necessarily be the case. But because we've got an even modulus, we're fine. Now, the last thing is, what about the additive inverses? Well, 0, it has an additive inverse of 0. Again, because we're doing the addition operation, we tend to write negative instead of a negative 1 for the inverse. Negative 2, we're trying to figure out what do we add to 2 to get 0. Well, since we're doing things mod 6, that's 4. And similarly, negative 4 is in this case 2. Again, every additive inverse is in the set. So that set is closed under addition, closed under multiplication, closed under additive inverses. Therefore, this set is a subring.